Welcome to this edition of City Spotlight. I'm Mayor Frank County, and today we're outside the bright Grandview Golf Clubhouse. We're going to get inside. We're going to take a look. They're up for LEED certification. Let's hope that uh, everything goes well. It's a great new facility right here on the east side of uh, Des Moines, right next to the beautiful Grandview Golf Course. After we're done talking uh, about what's going on in here, then we're going to talk to Tina Potoff, who is with Mid-American Energy and is going to talk to us about how we can save, how we can conserve, and some of the programs that are available with Mid-American Energy. We hope you enjoy our show. This is City Spotlight, and let's get started. Reducing, reusing, and recycling your household goods is an important contribution to our impact on our environment. So I encourage each of you to pitch in the blue bin and recycle more. Hey Ace, can Bill recycle this? That's right, only glass jars and bottles can go into the recycling bin. The other glass is just trash. I'm pitching in. Hey Serge, can Bill still recycle this? Fill up your blue bin and help keep service costs down. I'm pitching in. Hey Cubby Bear, I got aluminum cans, soft drinks, and beverages. Can I recycle these? Let's all recycle, especially aluminum cans. I'm pitching in. Thanks for pitching in, guys. By recycling your household materials like plastics, paper, metals, and glass, you make our community cleaner, you increase the life of our landfill, and you generate cash. Thanks for pitching in. Welcome back. Ned, welcome to City Spotlight. Thank uh, you. Let's quickly talk about everything that's going on out here. What a great clubhouse, and you guys have been uh, planning and working and thinking uh, for a really long time, and, and uh, what a great place. And of course, you had the uh, grand opening the other night, Dang. and Mrs. Bright was even out yes. here. Very energetic lady. Boy, uh, for we especially all especially for being a hundred years old. Exactly. So you know, I think that's a, that's the goal. We always yeah. all want to be like Mrs. No Bright. No kidding. But uh, talk to us about uh, kind of what's going on here. What are the hours of operation? What kind of stuff are you looking forward to doing? Sure, we'll be happy to. Well, we've um, we've opened the clubhouse in uh, late March, and uh, we've got 6,600 square feet of building here. We have a banquet room, restaurant room, dining room, the uh, combination that will seat about 200 people. Um, we have a full kitchen uh, that can cook just about anything you you could want. Uh, we have uh, obviously a pro shop and a, a golf section. We have a full bar uh, that uh, you can be used uh, whether you dine or not, and uh, golfers uh, can uh, enjoy a little relaxing moment to check their scores after they're finished and have a, a cold refreshment at the same time. And it's a very pretty facility, uh, very much uh, uh, appreciated by the people who have been playing here and uh, working and looking for great things and we're looking for ways to connect it to the community and uh, so far the reaction's been terrific. Well, so if I have a special occasion, I got a wedding or something sure. like that, how many uh, can I can I schedule that kind of an event number one and uh, is there a size limitation? I mean, what what do you look for? Yeah, we're looking for uh, opportunities to host uh, receptions, uh, parties, banquets, meetings. Uh, we can, depending on the configuration that the the group wants, we can set up 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 to about 200 people, uh, and uh, we're available uh, uh, for scheduling uh, on evenings, weekends, whatever. Uh, we're we're very flex flexible. We're just uh, actually trying to figure out how we want to go about doing it. Uh, generally speaking, uh, uh, the golf course obviously is open from daylight to dark. Uh, the restaurant uh, food service area right now is open from 7 to 3, and we expect to expand that time frame as we get uh, uh, more proficient at what we're doing. 
uh, and t eventually hope to have a basically a full-time uh, operation, a restaurant operation uh, from 7 in the morning to sometime late in the evening. 12 uh, months a year? 12 months a year. We're hoping to make this a 12-month uh, uh, a year facility, uh, keeping it busy in the wintertime with uh, the restaurant and uh, meetings and groups and receptions. We also intend, uh, when the weather permits, right now it's hard to believe, but we're thinking about putting an ice skating rink south of the building uh, to accommodate the sledders and mm -hmm. uh, uh, winter activities to full, more fully utilize the facility. Well, and uh, I know that uh, in talking with Mrs. Bright and her whole foundation early on, they uh, had sort of dreamed of a great place on the east side where people could gather, right. not have to go downtown, but kind of, you know, be out here. And, of course, uh, Grandview Golf Course is, uh, has a lot of history. Yes, second oldest public golf course west of Mississippi, and obviously Waveland is the oldest. So uh, that's Number quite one a, and number, number two. Number one and number two is pretty hard to get any better than that. Uh, and uh, uh, we're trying to fulfill exactly uh, what the Bright Foundation wanted, uh, make it a gathering place for the, the community. We've actually named the restaurant dining room the Scarlet Grill to try to further that connection with the neighborhood. Uh, so uh, yeah, we very much want that to happen. Talk to us a little bit about what's going on in the course. We've been getting some great reports about the condition of the greens. Of course, this this summer has been a little hard on them with the uh, right. water situation and uh, not much rain and a lot of heat. Uh, for the kind of weather we've been, been experiencing, the golf courses, all three of them actually, are in a really good shape. Uh, we in, uh, we undertook a major irrigation system uh, upgrading uh, at all three courses in the last two years, uh, basically replacing all the sprinkler heads and redoing the pumps so that not only we get better coverage uh, of, of uh, the areas where we're watering, but also to be more efficient in the use of watering. And uh, with this summer heat that we've been experiencing, it has paid off uh, greatly because, frankly, we are in very good shape. This, this course is a little different than, than the other two. Yes. Uh, what, what kind of experience can somebody expect coming out and playing at uh, Grandview? Actually, this golf course, for most golfers, would probably be the most enjoyable of the three courses to play. Because you can be an occasional golfer, you can be a once a year golfer, uh, you can be part of a group that's uh, coming out for a company outing or whatever, and not be overwhelmed by the game. It's just challenging enough to be fun, particularly the greens make it very challenging, uh, and everybody can uh, uh, generally putt. It's getting to the greens that usually usually frustrates people, and that's a, a little easier to do here. But at the same time, it's a great, fun place to play. Uh, Ned, back to the clubhouse, if somebody wants to schedule something, do, yes. do they have a, a phone number, an email, a, a website, or something that they can connect to, to to schedule an event or talk to somebody? We do have a website. In fact, you can get to our website by going uh, Bright Grandview Golf Course, or you can go through the city's Park and Recreation Department website and link to ours. Uh, we have uh, a menu and uh, all kinds of information there. And obviously, you can call the clubhouse 248 6301 and uh, talk to one of us. Uh, Paige Brackett is our events coordinator. You can ask for her, or anybody who answers the phone can steer you in the right direction. And we're eager to try to accommodate as many and as varied groups as we can. All right, if you don't mind, maybe we could take a quick tour around and uh, look at uh, what's going on around here, and you can show us kind of the That'd facility. That'd be great. Well, we've got a great facility here, especially with the new clubhouse. Uh, it's very, uh, very attractive, uh, uh, very uh, uh, appealing to uh, uh, to uh, visitors, and, and, and we have a great facility to be used uh, for meetings, banquets, outings, receptions, uh, and we're generally uh, trying to use it on a daily basis as a, a restaurant. We're serving a breakfast and lunch uh, from 7 in the morning to 3 o'clock at night, right, or afternoon. Right now, we hope to expand that to uh, a full uh, day and evening operation very shortly. Uh, we have a full kitchen, and we plus have a, a full uh, menu uh, of items available uh, daily. Uh, the golf course itself is absolutely great facility for a company outing or a party or reception. Uh, 
because it's a f golfer friendly golf course. Uh, you have people who uh, are just a, occasional golfers can play the golf course and enjoy it. And then we have the availability of the clubhouse for the after golf event uh, socializing for drinks or a meal. Hey, Ned, thank you very much. Hey, Glad to have you on City Spotlight. Let's right, do it again. Thank you very much. Hey, we ought to get out to the other courses. There you go, Mr. Mayor. All we right. Want you to, we want you to try them all. All right, let's do it. We'll be right back. I was a football player and rugby player through high school. I decided not to go on and play college sports. I wanted a competitive edge. Looked in the phone book and found the sport of judo. I competed in judo for seven years, and after doing judo, the competition had left, so I wanted a new competitive sport, so I looked in the phone book and found the sport of Muay Thai. During the day, I work in a pretty stressful banking environment. Coming to the gym after a hard day at the office is a really big relief. My name's Chris, and I geek Muay Thai. I'm Ben Page, I'm Interim Director of Parks and Recreation for the City of Des Moines. Uh, the existing location where the new clubhouse is had an old clubhouse there. The old clubhouse was, was outdated and just not the style of the golfing public and the community is needing this time of, or at this point in our city's history. It was cut up into a lot of small spaces. It was a great building during its time. It served its purposes, but it just wasn't uh, a building that was easy to promote for, for weddings and to par have some parties and neighborhood gatherings. 
it, it, it took an army of key people actually, the entire mayor and city council, and the park and recreation board, as well as there's a long serving committee called the Citizen Advisory Golf Committee who's been working for 20 years on just general golf related issues and projects for the city. They were the first ones to say, we really want a new clubhouse here. At the three city courses, Waveland, Blank, and Grandview, Grandview was the one with the largest need to have a new facility. The other two facilities were, were somewhat newer compared to Grandview's facility. So they, they pushed us originally to find a new uh, clubhouse, or at least the remedy to find a new clubhouse. From there, we began to work with the city manager's office to find out you know, what type of funding was going to be out there and available for a project like this. And then we, we, we began to work with the city finance department to see how that would all work. And we came to the reality that you know this was not going to be just a city project. It was going to be a public-private partnership here to build this great facility on our east side. So we began to find some potential donors that led us down the path to uh, Lois and Dale Bright Foundation. We began to work with their foundation to say hey, they've been great uh, advocates of the east side. We said, hey, we have this great project. Maybe you'd be interested in this. And lo and behold, they were very interested in helping the city with yet another great project that today is now known as the Bright Grandview Golf Course. This facility will have an amazing impact on the community. It's not just a golf facility. It can be used for public meetings, weddings, anniversaries, birthday parties, any type of special event. And, and golf is just not a year round, at least at Grandview Golf Course. It's not a, just a warm weather season facility. We have a lot of recreational winter activities out there from sledding to ice skating, just a general snow skiing. The clubhouse is going to be open year round, not just for golf again, but for all types of winter recreation. So the community will be able to come out, use the sledding hills, snow ski, ice skate, then come in when they're cold and warm up and get a nice hot chocolate and a nice warm cookie or something and enjoy it. It's also going to serve as a restaurant on the east side. It's got a full service kitchen in the back and they're going to have cater events as well as a an open regular uh, restaurant opportunity for those that want to come for just breakfast or lunch. It's anticipated that this will be a LEED building and it will be a LEED certified. So the first level of LEED is what we are anticipating this to be uh, awarded. Yeah, you don't have to be a golfer to come out and enjoy this facility. I mean, a lot of people think that's just for golf. So come out, check it out, have lunch or breakfast there, use it for your next pump company gathering or, or our birthday party. It's got a great uh, full service bar and kitchen. So if you're not a golfer, don't be afraid, stop out and just look around. It's, it doesn't cost a thing to come in and peek around and look at this great new city facility. Reducing, reusing, and recycling your household goods is an important contribution to our impact on our environment. So I encourage each of you to pitch in the blue bin and recycle more. Hey Ace, can Bill recycle this? That's right, only glass jars and bottles can go into the recycling bin. The other glass is just trash. I'm pitching in. Hey Serge, can Bill still recycle this? Fill up your blue bin and help keep service costs down. I'm pitching in. Hey Cubby Bear, I got aluminum cans, soft drinks, and beverages. Can I recycle these? Let's all recycle, especially aluminum cans. I'm pitching in. Thanks for pitching in, guys. By recycling your household materials like plastics, paper, metals, and glass, you make our community cleaner, you increase the life of our landfill, and you generate cash. Thanks for pitching in. Welcome back. With me now is Tina Potoff with Mid-American Energy, and we're going to talk about maybe how people can keep a little cool. This really been a hot summer. Right. And everybody has been looking at days in triple digits. And uh, talk to us a little bit of how do we keep cool, number one, and how can people save some money on their utility bills? Absolutely. Well, those are all good things to talk about. And we have seen one of the worst summers we've ever seen, um, not only here in the metro area, but also across our entire service territory. Mid-American Energy serves um, about 1.4 million customers when it comes to heat or um, electricity. And so as we're looking at the weather, that's a major factor when it comes to energy usage. Actually, in July of uh, this year, we set and surpassed our peak record energy usage in the company. In wow. July of 20. 
2011, we had set a record of a little more than 7,400, or pardon me, 4,700 megawatts of energy usage with our customers. And then July, we were slightly above that. So we know it's a major topic that we need to discuss. People are always asking, what are ways that I can save energy in my home that number one, are low cost or no cost? We like to tell them one of the easiest things that they can do is make sure that they're looking at that thermostat. If it is 72 degrees in your house and you're leaving for work, you might have a problem there. We tell people 78 degrees or higher is a great area to keep your thermostat. And if you have a programmable thermostat, make sure that you're setting that so that you don't have to remember or you might forget when you leave for work that programmable thermostat will take care of itself. About um, more than half the people that have programmable thermostats don't use them. So if you have one, check Check out your owner's manual in your home, make sure you get that thing set. Um, also another thing to remember is every time that you up the degree on your thermostat in the summertime, you could save anywhere between 3 to 5% on your utility bill. So if you're going from say 74 degrees to 75, or if you go from 74 degrees to that standard 78 degrees, that can make a significant impact on your utility bill at the end of the month. A few other things you might want to remember is if you're doing anything that's generating heat, that's also going to be a big energy usage. Um, uh, uh, that's that's also going to be big energy usage on your bill at the end of the month. So don't cook just eat ice cream, right? <laughs> exactly. We like to say that too. You know, if you're going to be baking cookies for the local Girl Scout troop, or if you're going to be doing laundry and hot water, save those things for early in the morning or late at night. And not only will that help your utility bill, or maybe the fall and the winter. And that would be helpful. We'd like that too. Um, it, what it'll do is it'll save not only on your utility bill, but it also helps us with some of those really high demand days and um, if if that doesn't take care of it then we always uh, implement other energy efficiency measures with our customers that have signed up for voluntary programs we have a residential program called the summer saver program um, that is where a customer can actually sign up to have a cycling device installed on their air conditioner they will receive an incentive at the end of the season so they get some additional money back um, it also helps regulate the airflow in their home so while their fan will continue to blow throughout the day if we're having Having a peak energy usage day, we can then go in and cycle their air conditioners on or off or to varying degrees so that we can save some energy on the entire electrical grid. It helps out overall. Sure. Talk to us a little bit about overall. I mean, you have uh, programs where you have auditors mm -hmm. come in and, and they'll go through your house and give you some tips and right. how do people uh, get access to that kind of a program and, and uh, try to Let's try to figure out how to help all of our citizens out 12 months a year. Certainly the summer is a yes. huge deal, but we're moving into to winter and right. that, that can be a problem too. Well, and fall is a great time to take a look at some of these programs that we have. You can log on to www.midamericanenergy.com to find out about all these programs. One of our most popular ones is the Home Check program. And that is where, depending on wh when your house was built, um, here in Des Moines, it would be December 34, December 31st of 2001 or earlier. Uh, so if you have an older home, this might be a program that you'll want to look into. You give us a telephone call and if you qualify, we'll send out an energy auditor to come and look at every aspect of your home. Everything from the heater to your showers and what type of water usage you're having when it comes to the hot water generation to uh, looking at your lights and what type of lighting you're using and if you qualify for any particular programs well, or rebates. Well, this is important in a city like Des Moines yes. where you know it's an older city. Right. And and we've got uh, probably half of our homes were built 1950s or before. Correct. And so many of them don't have any insulation in them. Mm -hmm. They're pretty loose around the edges, yep. uh, maybe the storm windows aren't, aren't good. And so you guys take a look at all those aspects? We do. And then the auditor will then sit down and talk with the homeowner about the different improvements that they can make to their home. And in some cases, they can offer rebates to them on the spot. So it just depends on how good the home is insulated or you know they might suggest um, changing out some light bulbs. There are a couple of free things that they'll do when they're in the home as well. Um, and it's really an educational process, not only for, um, for us to get more information about what our customers customers are doing, but for our customers to learn a little bit more about what they might qualify for. In addition to that, we also have um, business check, and that is where a business can do the exact same thing. So if a business owner is thinking, well, you have this for homeowners, but not businesses, we surely do, and they can give us a call as well. Um, do you guys track, as time goes along, the number of uh, energy days i mean do you take a is there a baseline and then you're either over or under and and how much power is 
consumed by the Des Moines area, and and so can you compare? Um, you know, some people will say, "Well, you know, I'm I've really insulated my house and I've done a great job," but then maybe we had a mild year. Right. Um, do you compare those kinds of things as you're looking also at uh, how well how homes and businesses are performing from an energy standpoint? Yeah, absolutely. We take a look at pretty much everything. We're very sure. data driven at the utility company. And so one of the things we're looking at is not on, only on a year to year comparison, but a month by month comparison. This past year, our winter really wasn't that bad. So people were very excited to get their utility bill, seeing how low it was. Natural gas was at an all time low and people weren't using a whole lot of it because because we saw a mild winter. Now, as we head into the summer, we're seeing a very hot summer. Energy use is, is, is up, and we're wanting to know what type of effect that's gonna have as we head into the fall and the winter. We tell people, though, the best way to save on your utility bill is to take those energy saving measures where you're actually being proactive about it on a season where it's maybe not as hot as it is in July or August. I know some people don't want to talk about it a lot, but let's talk just for a second about how do you see the trend that, that's happened over the last 10 years in terms of energy and, mm -hmm. and heat in the summer and is it milder in the winter or what are we seeing? We're seeing increased energy usage across the board and that's because more people have iPhones, more people have cell phones, there's bigger TVs that are out there and in many cases people are building bigger and there's bigger air conditioners. So we're seeing a gradual trend towards increased energy usage. Um, there's also something we educate people on called phantom load and that is where if you have a cell phone and you still have the cell phone charger plugged into the wall but no cell phone attached, that's considered phantom load. Sure. You're using energy to charge something that isn't even there. If you have the coffee pot plugged in uh, in the morning and you forget to unplug it uh, during the day, that's um, energy that is being used, but not really by the end consumer. Um, in, but you said uh, 2011 was warm and it looks like 2012 is even warmer. Exactly. We're especially seeing that this year. I mean, one of the hottest summers on record here in the metro and we're just looking for some relief. <laughs> All right. Well, Thank you so much for coming in and uh, um, again, uh, give us the how people can access MidAmerican and try to get uh, access to some of the information and advice and maybe an audit. Uh, so, uh, website, phone number? Sure, absolutely. You can always call us. Um, and that telephone number, especially for the audits, is 1-800-545-0762. And then they can also log on to our website at midamericanenergy.com. All right, Tina, thanks so much for being on our show. And again, until next time, I'm Mayor Frank County, and this is City Spotlight.